Now when it comes to riding a bike off-road, there's no shortage of contraptions and gadgets meant to soften the ride. Things like suspension stems and traditional and not so traditional suspension forks all serve to offer the rider comfort and greater control when the going gets rough. In this video, a close look at a unique approach to bicycle vibration damping, these bamboo handlebars from the New Zealand company Pashir. So these handlebars were sent to the channel a couple of months ago, and I've had them exclusively on the 1990 Hard Rock Resto Mod. Now these bars here are the Gump 760 model, so they're 760 millimeters wide. They've got a 22 degree sweep and a 31.8 millimeter clamp diameter. They weigh in at about 330 grams, and they're made from an engineered bamboo laminate. And they employ a carbon fiber clamping sleeve to distribute the clamping force. So no, they don't just chop down bamboo stocks and slap them on bikes. Now I know the first thing anyone will ask after seeing how much they flex is, sure, they look comfortable, but are they strong? So before I jump into my thoughts on the ride quality of these bars, I first want to address the question of strength that's on everyone's mind. The main idea is that strength and stiffness are not the same thing, and they are in fact two completely independent material properties. Now strength in this context is the amount of stress, or force per unit area, that a material can withstand before failure. Whereas stiffness is the resistance of a material to deformation. Now the way engineers typically analyze these material properties is to look at what's called the stress strain curve for any given material. Now these plots are typically produced experimentally by applying a gradually increasing load to a test sample and measuring the deformation along the way. Now there's a lot of information packed into a typical stress strain curve, but the stiffness of a material is essentially the slope of this linear region, which we call the elastic region. While the strength of a material is generally quantified by the yield strength or sometimes the ultimate tensile strength, which is not a slope, but rather a value along the y-axis here. And again, it represents the stress that a material can withstand before it enters the plastic or permanent deformation region, or in some cases, the stress that a material can withstand before the phenomenon of necking occurs. Now in any case, these two properties, strength and stiffness, are independent. And so a flexible handlebar, like the Pashir bamboo handlebars, are less stiff than, say, a cheap alloy bar, but that doesn't imply anything about the strength. Now, interestingly, the website does indicate that these handlebars are not intended for extreme mountain biking, but rather touring and commuting, which does kind of beg the question of how strong they are exactly. It would be nice to see some data resembling a modified stress strain curve for bending, or even just a statement of the yield strength of the bamboo laminate that they use, so we can kind of gauge it against other materials that are more commonly used. Now, there is some data presented on the website, but a keen eye will identify several questions regarding the vibration data plot. For instance, it does appear to be a plot of accelerometer data, but the x-axis, which appears to be the time axis, shows 10 data points for the 0.43 timestamp and at least 11 data points for the 0.42 timestamp, which to me implies a variable sample rate. Now this is important because in order to reliably draw any conclusions about vibration frequencies, you generally want to be sampling at a fixed rate. And also not to be super nitpicky, the y-axis is kind of vague as well, as it's labeled quote vibration rate, which to me implies some type of frequency typically measured in hertz, which really has no place on the dependent axis of a plot. The y-axis in this plot is likely the acceleration measured in G's, but that's just my best guess. And lastly, the superimposed blue and orange plots seem to imply that the alloy bars produce much larger accelerations when compared to the bamboo handlebars. But this type of superimposed data is really only valid if measured on the same bike through the same section of trail on two different handlebars, which if you think about it for a moment is basically impossible to acquire. Now it's more likely that these two plots were measured in two different experiments and then superimposed on the same set of axes, which truthfully isn't particularly meaningful. Anyways, before I get too carried away with nitpicking the data, I think what I'm trying to say here is that the bars themselves do feel really nice. But as a technical minded consumer, I don't think that the reported vibrational data is necessarily helpful. And if anything, it can be a little bit misleading. So anyways, what about the actual ride feel? Well, data and testing aside, I can actually say that these handlebars are truthfully very comfortable. The flex is very apparent while riding, but it's not distracting, and the handlebars don't feel disconnected from the bike in any way. Now on the 1990 Hard Rock here, which has a cheap steel frame and fork, 
The bike is really pretty harsh if we're being honest. And so these bamboo handlebars actually made a legitimate difference in the comfort of the ride. Now, I'm not sure what the definition of touring or trekking really is, but I took this bike down some relatively rough gravel trails and the handlebars did great. It definitely was not concerned about them breaking, even through some pretty chunky sections. And all the while it was very apparent that the flex in the bars was helping to damp out some of the vibration. So yes, I really do like these handlebars and I think they made a substantial difference in ride comfort, especially when the trail got rough. So are there any things that I did not particularly like about them? Well, there is one thing that kind of struck me that's probably worth mentioning. So on a typical suspension fork, for example, your wrists are essentially fixed as you compress through the suspension travel. But with these bamboo handlebars, your wrists naturally rotate a bit as the bars flex, just due to the way that the handlebars deflect. Now, while the ride quality overall was much smoother with these bars, I did notice that my wrist became a little bit sore after descending through rougher terrain. And I suspect that it may be due to the thousands of small rotations of the wrist joint that aren't usually present with other modes of suspension. It's really the same reason that I don't particularly prefer the shock stop stem from Redshift, which is a stem that rotates about a single pivot point. Those small but persistent rotations of the wrist joint feel a little bit unnatural to me, and after a long time, they do cause some discomfort, at least in my case. But of course, it could very well be simply because I was plowing through some legitimate chunk on an old, stiff 90s mountain bike. So who are these handlebars for? Well, I would say that they're for someone who wants to take the edge off the perpetual road vibration and improve the comfort of their bike without resorting to a full-on suspension fork or a suspension stem. These handlebars are also completely sustainable and the company is devoted to conservation and participates in tree planting and ocean cleanup efforts, which is highly commendable. Now, I will say that if you are someone who really likes to plow through the chunky stuff, you shouldn't expect these bars to offer the same kind of compliance and ride feel of a more traditional suspension solution like a suspension fork. Rather, these handlebars mostly serve to damp out some of that persistent, low amplitude rumble associated with off-road riding. And then of course, there's the issue of price. No, these are not cheap handlebars. These are handcrafted by a small company. And in mid 2023, they'll run you about 225 US dollars, which does sound expensive. But if you think about these handlebars as a suspension solution, then you're really comparing the cost of these handlebars to say a suspension stem or even a suspension fork, which can cost the same, if not substantially more. So there is that. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Put a link to Pashir's website website down below if you're interested in reading more about these handlebars. Now, if you have any questions about these handlebars or my experience with them, let us know down in the comments and we'll do our best to respond. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.